He's had over a half a century of service in national security, including combat as a Green Beret commander in Vietnam. So you better be sure I was gonna start on time for him. Um, he held key assignments in special operations, intelligence, and research and development, and participated in several unique programs, including application of psychokinesis, enhancing human performance with NLP, or neuro-linguistic programming, and experimentation with a unique energy source known as the Hutchinson Effect. He formed an interagency group to study UFOs called Advanced Theoretical Physics, and he's a former past president of the International Association for Near-Death Studies. He was a founding board member of the International Remote Viewing Association as well. He has published five nonfiction books, including Future War, UFOs, Myths, Conspir Conspiracies, and Realities, and most recently, Reality Denied, First-Hand Experiences with Things That Can't Happen But Did. Please welcome John Alexander. Uh, first of all, as the intro said, I've been involved in studies in many, many areas. And in my view, all of these things are interrelated, and that does include UFOs, and even the issues on uh, cryptozoology. Now, to this topic, <clears throat> UFOs. I'm not sure what you mean, because I've heard everybody talking about, you know, we want to have advanced technology in that. But I got little balls of light, orbs and whatnot. We've got huge craft, literally miles across, that are quite physical, and everything in between. And it's the, the problem that I see is there are so many different kinds of things. So when you get into the issue of, uh, you know, do they exist or what does it mean? It's kind of, you gotta get back to, you know, what type of UFOs are you talking about? You have a B-52 that's out on a training mission. As it's uh, headed back, the air traffic control comes back and says, we want you to go to X, Y, Z, uh, the site. And they go, what are we looking for? Or what is this? You'll know it if you, find, if you see it. And this is one where Brad Yunion uh, was a pilot. Uh, they're flying, and they come over the UFO, which they describe there on the ground, hundreds of feet long, uh, 200 feet in diameter, glowing craft. In addition to the crew, there were credible witnesses on the ground that saw it hovering, so you had many different perspectives uh, on that craft. And the, you know, the explanation was it was a star or Venus or something like that. And you're going like, they flew over Venus? Give us a break. <laughs> um, it was interesting, but there was an object that came up on the B-52. Uh, you look in the lower right-hand corner there, and they had the good sense to take, snap a picture because they saw something approaching it and went, out, went away. Of course, there's been a lot of... Uh, pilot uh, observations, this has gone on for some time. So what did we do? We were as an ad hoc group, uh, we had self-initiated, everybody was interested, fun to no particular funding, so we decided that we would take a step forward and actually try and get, make it formalized and get it funding. As I mentioned, SDI was the biggest program at the time, they were around $5 billion. <clears throat> which also meant, if you know anything about the funding process, uh, the knives were out, because this was a, a target to go after money. But uh, a meeting was set up. General Abramson did not know the purpose of the meeting when we went in. <clears throat> and I was leading it. I had a group of people from different agencies accompanying me and all that. And I started the briefing, and it was going, uh, about five minutes in, he goes, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Who are you guys really? So we talked to him for a uh, fairly rare length of time, made the case, uh, gave him data from uh, various places, including some stuff that the Soviets uh, were doing. And he was interested uh, in, in that, we were more interested in how did we get the data. Uh, but anyway, so finally he said, well, what to do is to formalize the program and get funding. And, and this is kind of critical. He said, look, 
I, I can't touch this. I'm, I'm doing some hairy stuff now. And, you know, you know the big budget people are, are after and trying to explain it. He says, if I get caught doing UFO study, that, that's going to assume that I'm not a good stuff, uh, steward of public funds. And I won't just lose that money, I'll lose a lot more. Now, I am interested, he said he would be interested, and he says we are soon going to be monitoring more of space than we have ever before, and if you can tell me what to look for, we can put it into the algorithms and that, which we thought was kind of critical because, like I said, you saw things that were zipping around and behaving in uh, un unnatural ways. This is the greatest uh, story never told. And I don't know what you mean by disclosure. I mean, but we had three presidents. You know, Reagan chased the damn uh, UFO. Carter had reported one. Uh, Truman had reported uh, over UFO or over Washington area. Uh, the rest of them won't go through who all of those people are, but they're uh, from world renown. Have all been saying UFOs are real. And of course, most recently you have. Uh, Obama going on there saying, you know, the, the footage is real, records are there, and uh, yeah. And he also said, I can't, there's stuff I can't tell you. But the point here is lots and lots of com countries have come forward with reports of uh, UFOs. Now, we were told that if this happened, you know, terrible things would happen. The world would collapse. You can't handle it. Um, that's not what we've seen. This has generally been the response uh, globally. One of the key issues uh, that I want to point out, though, this goes back to the infamous Twining uh, memo. And I'll, yes, it was classified in uh, 1947 when it was put out. It was before he became uh, chairman of the Joint Chief. But the point here is, he had said in 47, yay verily, this is real, you know, the phenomenon is real, it's not a vision. Now, one of the key issues to me, because remember, it's going out classified, this is very shortly after the supposed crash at Roswell, you don't see anything about the crash, and that he's talking in a classified manner to his own people, saying that you're gonna have to take it. Now, the problem that I see is, UFO community will not take yes for an answer. It just, um, you know, I don't know how many people have to tell you, yep, yeah, it's, it's real. The other where I disagree with a lot of people is we do know that most people believe in UFOs, at least 70%, probably higher than that, and particularly now. But UFOs are real, and what I say is confirmation of what you already believe is not a change. It's not a complete paradigm shift at all. And yes, they're real. It's kind of so what? No, it doesn't change them. What Victoria likes to say is, if you have this confirmation, does that mean I have to go to work tomorrow or go to school? The answer is yes.